Try recording. Oh man! All right, so I am here with the famous Sylvia. I, I, how do I say your last name? Alexiev. Alexiev. Oh, all right. So let me just start with Miss Sylvia Alexiev. Um, I didn't realize how impressive uh, your resume was. You have done. You have done a lot of things in the sa- salsa community. Thank you. Yes, of I course. So. So uh, let me ask you this. You're from the D.C. area, is that correct? So I'm originally from Bulgaria. Okay. Which is a small country in Eastern Europe. Right, right, right. And uh, I have been in D.C. for the last 20 years, give or take. I spent two years in Chicago between 2007 and 2009. Okay, okay, I got you. And so did you grow up dancing in Bulgaria or just uh, once you moved to the States? No, I actually grew up dancing. I started dancing Ballroom, when I was right? six years old. So I've been, you know, doing different styles. Uh-huh. But, um, you know, I did ballroom for many years. I competed and I switched to salsa when I moved to the uh, D.C. area, to so, the U.S. So, yeah, who, who, who or what introduced you to salsa? Like, what, what got you into this originally? Yeah, so I was uh, a ballroom girl and I was trying to make it into the ballroom world. Uh, But one day a friend of mine took me to a salsa dance club and I went in there with the um, typical standoffish ballroom attitude (laughs) that I I know it all. But as soon as I, you know, got asked to dance and the guy that I was dancing with, the first question was, are you ballroom? So I was like, yeah. You can tell. Yeah, so he, you know, he basically suggested that I need, I have to loosen up, you know, mm. my shoulders and hips and everything to kind of fit in. So, and I loved it because number one, the people were uh, much more down to earth uh-huh. and uh, very open. Um, they kind of accepted me, you know, right away, and they uh, kind of, you know, welcomed me into to the community and. Uh, I loved it. I just <laughs> fell in love with it, and I, I quit ballroom right away. Okay. <laughs> doing salsa ever since I joined a performance team, probably within a month of that. Um, so, so how how uh, old were you then when you first started? Then, I mean, that was two thousand and four. So I was twenty five. Okay. Wow, that's crazy. You started kind of late in life, actually. Well, yeah, with the South. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it wasn't that hard for me to, you You've been know, dancing all your life. Right. Yeah. And so, so. I mean. I see. So you started 25. So how long total? How long have you been dancing? 20 plus years? Uh, For salsa? Yes, yeah, ma'am. I mean, I'm 41 now. Okay. So. <laughs> Dude, I'm just, I'm, I'm uh, so impressed because you've been dancing so long. I know you have so much experience. Uh, If I could ask you this, um, what advice would you give 25 year old Sylvia? I honestly, I, if I had to go back and, and give advice is, uh, you know, to someone who's that age and just starting, um, just, you know, work hard and don't underestimate it because it's, it's a lot of work. You, you have to, to be to be good, um, you have to put a lot of work into it. It's something that you have to drill, drill, drill. It's not. It depends on what level you want to be at. If you even if you want to be just a social dancer, you have to do the work. You know, it doesn't work with just taking classes. You have to go out social dancing. I used to go out every single day, every single day, and even though i stayed late in you know in the salsa clubs then i went to my work the ne- the next day but i was younger so i could do that <laughs> okay okay i understand that i'll say um i don't know if i'll tell you a little bit about myself i started dancing when i was around 20 21 years old and um i saw the greatest i guess leap in my skills when i joined the performance team so i definitely understand what you're saying on that because that i perf- mean the, the performance team is great. Uh, it's it's a great um, a technic technical technically speaking, you you get a better dancer, um, you know, because you you work you work on the technical side of it. But you if you you could be a great performer and you could be really bad at social dancing. Okay. I, I've had that 
I've had that right in front of my eyes. The the people, my teammates uh, in the performance team that I was, I was the only person who was a good social dancer because I literally went out and social danced every every day because it's one thing to memorize a choreography ah. and drill it with the same person. So true. And yeah, you, you, you know each other, you know exactly what's going to be happening every second. But when you go out social dancing, you dance with different level partners, you dance with people that have studied or learned salsa, who knows where, and you have to ad ad adjust to whatever, you know, uh, you get presented to. And, uh, you, you know, you have to um, be able to uh, um, to handle that. That's, that's because, so true. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I always say, because if you only want to be a performer, yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, uh, it's a lot of hard work and it's uh, a totally different thing like going on stage. You have to go through an entirely different experience. Um, but a lot of people actually um, refuse to be a part of performance teams and, and to perform because they just want to they don't want to be tied to a choreography because it, it, it doesn't really have a practical application. Performing is great. I was very competitive, uh -huh. uh, you know, growing up. I, that's all I wanted to do okay. and compete. But, you know, the reality is you, you don't, you know, you're not going to make a ton of money, uh, you know, being a salsa performer unless you are like, I don't know, junior and Emily or okay. famous, but, um, you know, it's it's the social aspect of it that actually led me into, you know, uh, starting this business and, and having a, a successful business because what we do is mainly we teach people how to social dance and we take people that say, oh, I have two left feet, uh, but, you know, our program is very structured and we take them from zero to you know until they are very comfortable social dancing wise and they go on to different places they social dance um they take other classes and um so on and so forth i understand that completely i, I definitely want to i definitely want to talk about your dance studio uh i, I did my research on it but i want to ask you about this um at one point you were a tv producer for nasa is that correct Yes, that and, is correct and, for 10 years. Okay, 10 years. That's amazing. But you, you never gave up your love of dancing. So um, to the individuals who, to people out there who are, um, I guess, hesitant to, I guess, essentially quit their day job and pursue like their, their true interests, what, what would you say to them? Or what advice, if you have any? What I would say is I don't, I, it is actually a very scary. Yes, movie. yes. And I completely understand why people are hesitant because the only thing, you have to be realistic about it. Because people always say, follow your dream, dreams, no matter what, just throw out everything and follow your dreams. Yes, I mean, in the movies, it, it works like, <laughs> right? like that, you know? <laughs> this is real it, life. It but, you know, you also have to be realistic about it because, let's face it, if you do quit your daytime job, you got to know what's going to pay your rent, what's going to pay your bills, you know, whatever else you're doing in life. So I didn't, I mean, trust me, if, if it was up to me, I would be a dancer my entire life starting at six years. Right. That's all I wanted to do. But then, of course, my parents were like, you know, that's not going to get you anywhere, uh, you know, what kind of money you're going to make. And, you know, they, they, I proved them wrong because you can actually have a very successful business with your passion. Awesome. But, 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 but to get to that, you, before you make that leap, you have to make sure that you have something that will support you while you're making that jump. So it, it was a very scary move, not to mention I actually liked my job. It was, you know, it's a creative job. That's what my education uh, is in. I, uh, I have a master's degree in film and video. Oh, okay. And um, it's a hard job to get. And I accomplished that. It was, and especially for a foreigner. Uh, so it was, it was, I had to go through a few extra steps. Uh, and I was really good at it. I was a lead producer. Uh, I worked with, uh, missions like really big missions at NASA and I traveled to rocket launch sites okay. and I did interviews and things like that and it was very exciting 
but it was also the 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 the, the bureaucracy and the political side okay. of it that kind of you know killed the creativity a little bit um you know although nasa is a great place to work at it's more creative than a lot of other um government institutions uh, but um you know it was at a point where i was ready in that i had been working on developing my business and clientele and um i also have a web design background so i was you know i created my own website i optimized it i had the the clients that were coming into my first studio which was in the basement of my house exactly so, so it wasn't like i you know jump into this uh you know with with nothing uh -huh. I, I i literally just you know transferred my business from the basement to um this large studio that we have now and it was it was a very scary move because you're left without the benefits you're left without the insurance you're left you know all of a sudden you're on your own yeah and you for yourself think twice when you go to the store and you're like i want to buy something but i know i'm not going to get that steady paycheck and it's all on you yeah so absolutely follow your dreams uh but just be have a good head on your shoulders and you know make sure that uh, you can make it because it's the worst thing like you, you can have the best dream and you, you can be very passionate about something but it's especially in this in in the dance world it's hard it's it's very hard because people don't take you seriously unless you're some amazing talent yeah that someone will see you and cast you or okay like, hire you right on the spot but it's it's very hard uh, so um it's just like the nature of you know the nature of what we do i mean even now my former colleagues at nasa they, they don't understand what i'm doing they oh. think I'm dancing all day and they're like <laughs> well, what, what do you really do like do you have a second job to support yourself i'm like no like running a business you are this is you are a business owner definitely yeah, it's more than a full time job, but a lot of people don't understand my decision because I had a, a, you know, a great job. I I worked at NASA. Like my relatives were like, "You're crazy. You're not gonna be able to say that you work at NASA anymore." I'm like, saying that you work at NASA doesn't make you happy. You yeah, know? so true. Oh man, I lost you. Oh man, I lost you. Oh man, I lost her. What happened? I Hello. I think you put me on hold. Okay, you're back now. Okay, awesome. I guess. No, no, I I didn't put you on hold. I uh there was a phone call when it comes to my phone. Oh, okay, I got you. I understand. Can we continue? Is everything okay? Uh yes. I mean, if if that happens again, that's that's why it's happening. No, I understand. It's but... not a problem. I want okay. um I want to ask you one, one more thing. Um Okay. You've danced for twenty years. What what lessons have you learned from dancing that you can translate to your everyday life? Well, I always tell people that dancing has literally changed my life and it has been there for me in the hardest moments of my life. So not only it is a positive experience when you're going through some something hard in your life uh, when i was and i went to my dance class or to my rehearsal everything just seemed less scary okay. and less impossible so it it has i'm not exaggerating it's like it's a very positive experience. It's positive energy. It's you surround yourself with great people. You uh, you have something to look forward to, even Definitely. if you're having a, a bad day. Um, so, and the other thing is that we try to tell parents, you know, when when they're not sure, you know, if their kids should be dancing. It's a very important life skill because when you go to a dance class, even with our adult students, when they walk in here, they're very intimidated. Yeah. They've never 
uh, they're worried. Oh my God, someone's going to be laughing at me. And they walk out and they have a huge smile on their faces and they've met new friends and they socialize and they go out. And so overall, it's a very, very positive environment uh, just because that's what dance is. It's yeah, music, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, connection between people. Uh, but, you know, what we try to tell parents is like it teaches you to be more outgoing. It, it definitely helps your with your self-confidence. Yes. I, I grew up with a very low self-esteem and dancing is the one thing that helped me go out there, you know. So it's not easy to go out on stage. But when you go out on stage, the next thing you know, you're not so shy speaking in front of public. Mm hmm. You're right. You know, and and that's crucial for a lot of people, you know, even if it's not if you even if you're not a dancer for life, you could definitely benefit from you're just you're just less intimidated in front of people. Uh you're more outgoing, you're more social, you know how to, you know, have a conversation. Um and so it it's a very important life skill. Definitely. Um, I definitely agree with that. Like I said, I've been dancing for a little bit myself, and it does make you more social. I just want to add to that. I definitely agree with that one hundred percent. It's me being a lead. Um, when I go to a social event, you know, it's it's normally the the lead goes out and asks for the dance first. So, just the whole experience, you know, it helps with it. Oh yeah, I mean, especially for for guys. I mean, I also, I mean, for the ladies, I, we also tell them, always tell them, there's nothing wrong with a lady going and asking a guy uh, to dance. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> I mean, like, especially in this country, I have never. It's it's really like the guy is not gonna look at you like oh. oh no. yeah. But you know, in my country, it's different. If you go back, you know, if when I go back home. I just sit there on the side and wait for people to ask me because it's just not accepted. And when you go and ask someone, it's just taken the wrong way, you know? Uh, so so the, there's an actual salsa scene in Bulgaria? Oh, yeah. There's oh, a wow. big okay. salsa scene. That's yep. amazing. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so how about this? Um, what What is your mentality when it comes to challenging and, and overcoming an obstacle? Because you have a business, and I know that has that has been very difficult for you. So what has your mentality been throughout this whole endeavor of yours? Always on to the next thing. You know, it's like if you stop the cycle and you, you know, you, you just stop and drill on one thing, ex especially for me, I, I get bored and I always look for the next challenge. Um, so even though I know it's going to be hard, like right now, for example, we're working on opening a second location. Oh, wow. Okay. So I know it's going to be more stress in addition to this studio plus two kids and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, you never know until you try it. That's so I have true. a good, good support system. So again, like I'm not going into it empty handed. Like, I, you know, I have the model that I would just apply to another location. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, always kind of look into what's next because you have to challenge yourself. If you, if you don't challenge yourself, then you're just going to be, get mm, depressed and not, <laughs> not happy. No, I understand that know? completely. I definitely understand that. This, I want to talk about your dance studio because if, if I'm not mistaken, you have the largest dance studio in the DMV area. Is that, is that correct? That is correct, although some people may not like it when I say it, but we are actually the largest dance studio that focuses primarily on Latin dance. Okay. There, are, there are a lot of other studios like uh, Joy of Motion and uh, other, you know, big chains, uh, nationwide chains, but uh -huh. they, you know, they, they, they have a different focus. Uh, we are the only... Latin, uh, the only studio that focuses on Latin dance primarily for adults is specifically salsa and bachata. Because okay. sometimes people are surprised that they ask, well, what other styles do you offer? We we literally just teach salsa, bachata, and a little bit of merengue. Okay, okay. Um, and you originally started, everything was started in your basement, your house basement, is that correct? Yeah, my first ever 
my very own first studio was in the basement of my house uh-huh. prior prior to that i had taught at other studios but that was the first uh studio that i owned was in the basement of my house yes okay. and so so you go from the basement in your house to this beautiful building you're in now but and all that started in 2014 correct when you had a uh, crowdfunding campaign is that what you did yes so we had a crowdfunding campaign to raise funds for to build out this new space because this was an empty shell and we had to literally build it from having nothing in the space to even building the walls. Okay, wow. Build. Yeah, so we uh, the crowdfunding campaign was a very small fraction of you know the funds that were needed to build the space, but we also won a grant, a grant from exactly. the DC government. Yeah, exactly. so. We uh, wrote the story, the application, and we got approved for an eighty-five thousand dollar grant. So uh, let me ask you about that crowdfunding. Um, I saw that you raised over seventeen thousand for that crowdfunding. My question is, uh, why do you think you were able to even raise that much money? So not really how, but what made you successful in that crowdfunding um, plan? I gave I gave a lot of free classes. Okay. <laughs> I understand that. I, I literally offered a hundred classes for a hundred dollars. Okay, I understand that. So you you gave value though. That's what you did. Yeah, I definitely gave value because uh, sadly, um, especially in this area, I don't know how it is in other areas, but um, it's it's kind of you know there there are people there there are some people, few people that will actually come forward and say. I have more money than I need. Here's a check for. We've had a few times, you know, people donate awesome. like, you know, fifteen hundred dollars just awesome. like that because they believe in what we do. That's but wonderful. you know, pe- pe- people, you know, d- they're not always so generous. So you have to offer value to get. But like I said, I mean, the the crowdfunding campaign was honestly more of a publicity ah, tool okay. than actual uh, fundraiser. Um, so we so we got the help from the government, and uh, the rest of it was just a loan. Okay. That we're still paying. <laughs> I understand. You got to start from somewhere. I'm I'm curious. Um, what is what is the hardest part about owning a dance studio? The hardest part is finding the right people. The okay. right people that will run uh, the place because um, I can't be everywhere at all times. And knowing that you have people that you can rely on and it takes a while. It's a process. It's something that I learned. You know, I, I'm not a business major. I haven't, you know, I had not have a big team like I do now. And so I had to learn myself, you know, how to work with people, how to manage people. And so that's the hardest thing, you know, the rest of it, you know, I, I don't, uh, I don't have a hard time coming up with ideas. So, On that end, I have plenty of ideas, and I also have my staff that is great in supporting me and um, coming up with ideas. And it's uh, it's not easy uh, to get here, but and we definitely st- still have room for improvement. But we're constantly working on it. So, but that's the hardest part is just finding the right team. I definitely understand that. How big is your team currently? About twenty people. Okay, yeah, you, that that is that is the team. Um, what is your favorite part about owning a dance studio? Seeing how much difference the favorite my favorite part is seeing how much difference we make in people's lives okay. in both kids and adults because people really enjoy it and they come out of the classes um, smiling. A lot of them. <laughs> A lot of them uh, meet um, new friends here, um, and that's that's great because, especially in a city like DC, um, social life is not you know it, it's hard because everybody's so career oriented. 
Um, so this this is a great thing that I know that people meet new friends here and the kids are having fun and hopefully a few of them at least will be dancers. So yeah, I don't think I told you I'm actually from Rich, Virginia. So I, I've definitely been to DC plenty of times. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, they had this thing this um on Saturday nights we would go to. They had bachata, sensual bachata at this one club, and I forget the name of it now. I'm blanking on it. Um, but yeah, I used to go up to DC all the time and go clubbing. Um, I was looking. Through all right, it. where um, did you go? I'm trying to remember the name of it, but unfortunately, I cannot remember the name of it. Um. It was uh, I forgot the name of it. I, I can't even think of it. But, so we'll just move on from it. <laughs> okay. Um, I remember looking through one of your videos, and you said um, your biggest inspiration, I believe, is the children's program. Uh, what makes that so special to you? The children's program is a big inspiration because I actually my original inspiration for the children's program was my older daughter okay i when she was three i started looking for a dance studio for her to go to and i really couldn't find anything that i liked for her and i then i thought well why am i looking elsewhere where can i where i can create my own program that i can design the way i want and it's been the an inspiration but it's also been very challenging because it's completely different working with the children Uh, and parents okay and a lot of times you know we find ourselves educating and disciplining the parents not the kids okay okay but it's also rewarding you know because we see kids that started with us when they were three years old or even younger and then they grow up and they keep coming here and you see how they're progressing Mm -hmm. and um so it's very i mean it's it's inspirational in that sense and i also like to see how my daughters you know uh started and how they're you know uh, my little one is just starting now so um it's an inspiration but also like even the the adult program it, it's it's sometimes when you're so involved with the with the day-to-day um items you know uh, and uh, tasks of the business you don't have the time to look back or look at where you are where you started where you are now but like sometimes we for for example to to get the second location or get a loan or something like that we have to pull some numbers and then when you see that you have 2500 people walking through the door every month it's uh you know it's a big crowd yeah so you know you this is an accomplishment you know that that's why we say the largest studio because not only you know the look the the actual space is big but in terms of um how much uh traffic we get uh uh, it's more than any um studio in the area so it's it's a product of of a lot of many hours of of course hard hard work of course um i was I was going through your YouTube page and you have so many instructional videos, um, which is amazing. Uh, how has how has your YouTube channel helped your dance studio and your business? Uh, yeah, so the that idea was thrown at me by a friend of mine. He is a um, kite boarder, and he said, "You know, there's a there's a channel where they do this thing called Trick of the Week. So every week they show a new trick." a new kiteboarding trick so he was like why don't you do that it's you know it's good exposure uh and i was like i don't know because you know i don't like to be the person on camera (laughs) like i'm usually behind the camera and and i was because for my job at nasa i've done some on-camera work and you know i i like people had different comments about it so i was i was very kind of uncertain about it but i i started i did a few videos and i was super surprised because i started getting comments from literally all over the world how much they like my style of teaching how uh, i've made a difference in their community that they have like groups that are taking my lessons on online Uh 
and it just uh i mean right now we have what i, I haven't been on the channel lately but we have a lot of subscribers subscribers 9.6 i don't quote me but i want to say it was like that yeah um <laughs> yeah so i mean we um and then we started like you know i started um, producing one video every week okay. uh, called Quoted trick of the week and we did that for years and um you know it just kind of uh created its own following from yeah. all over the world it was to me that was a surprise it was it was a uh, kind of a shot in the dark uh -huh. uh, and um i wasn't sure what's gonna happen because you know there's so many amazing salsa dancers exactly, out there yeah uh and i was like people are gonna laugh at me like who <laughs> Who is she? But what people like, and you know, when you read the comments, is what people like is that my teaching style is very kind of down to earth, and mm. they they like that I explain things in detail, as opposed to like other uh, website, other YouTube channels. They're like, oh, here's a few moves, and if you want more, go pay on the website. Right, you know, exactly. I, I offer all this content for free, and uh, I'm glad to do so, and I'm happy that people are benefiting from oh, it. Oh yeah, now you, you're giving value, so people people are gonna definitely just naturally gravitate towards you. So that's that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I like to um, you know sort of know that I'm helping the community in yeah. one way or another. We this past year we started a scholarship program for kids, so we have a team of um, kids that we sponsor uh that we pay for their training okay. and they perform and they represent the studio but yeah we're trying to help out kids that would normally not be able to you know afford taking dance classes and just um trying to you know help them and um make that dream a reality for them no, that's amazing can we um i want to I want to change topics and I want to talk about your, your dance team. It's called Amica. Is that correct? Yeah. So Amica, Amica uh, dance me. company. <laughs> oh, no problem. No problem. Yeah. I started that in 2008 in Chicago. Actually, that's where the original Amica was. Um, and then when I moved back to DC, um, actually, I didn't want to do it that much just because it's uh I imagine it's, it's a lot, lot of work, it, right? It's a lot of work. Of course. Uh, so I, but then a few of my students uh, that were actually later became the first Salsa Latifi instructors oh. that I trained. Uh, they were like on my case. Why don't you form a group? And I finally did. And I coded that. Um, and, you know, I'm honestly, I don't know why I coded that. I have a multimedia business that was more active in the in, back in the day. It's called Amica Studio. So oh, I just okay. called it. I guess you. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I don't, I'm not the director anymore. Oh, it's you're not. Oh, to, oh okay, uh, okay. Yeah, so I, I mean, it's still in the, it, they train in the studio, right. but one of my instructors uh, is their director. Okay. Uh, she's also one of my very first uh, students that I had here in DC. Um, and so she's running, she's running the, <clears throat> she's running the team right now. I get you. Um, so when you were the director of the team, what what was your favorite part about having a dance team? Um, well, seeing seeing the the product, you know, coming from you know starting from just an idea in your head and then choreographing and then seeing the final product on stage with costume and makeup and and the reaction of the audience because okay. you know i've i've always been a performer and um you know I, I even tried to perform with them but that i quickly realized that's kind of impossible to be the director and to be uh -huh. either. so yeah i mean um it's it, i mean they're, they're still they're they're great they they still train here in the studio they represent us uh but um, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of work of so course. that's something that i can afford this time all right um i want to kind of change gears but real quick I, I, you might be busy i lost the video feed so I, I don't know if you might be doing something yeah no i actually my battery is kind of low but i yeah that's why i turned it off it's all good so all right well i'm gonna, I'm gonna change this up real quick i want to ask you just um 
some real quick rapid fire questions, okay? Sure. All right, awesome. So check this out. I'm, I want I want you to try to answer these, and we'll say ten seconds or less. All right. All right. All right. Perfect. I'll so, try. <laughs> all right. So, uh, as a child, what did you want to be growing up? I wanted to be a dancer. Okay. Okay. Um, how good of a dancer is your husband? He is not good at all. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? The best piece of advice is that everything will work out. Wonderful. What is the worst piece of advice you've ever received? That dancing is not going to get me anywhere. I understand that. Uh, It might be obvious. What is your favorite dance style? My favorite dance style, believe it or not, nowadays is bachata. Okay. All right. Sure enough. Um, All right. Check this out. You are stuck on an island for five days. You can only bring three items. What are they? Uh, well, it's going to be funny, but uh, I can't live without my computer. Okay, sure enough. <laughs> I, if it's an island, I'll bring my kiteboarding gear because I'll find some wind to kiteboard. And I'm, I have to bring my kids, even okay. though they're not an item. But <laughs> I'm not that. going. Uh, what is your favorite dance congress to go to? The LA South Congress. Okay, okay. And um, what is one tip that you can give to someone that will instantly make them a better dancer? Go out social dancing. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome. It- as much as you can. Okay. You um you did a perfect job on those questions. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um so I, I wanna end it with just I honestly a couple more questions anyway. Um what advice can you give to beginner to like people who are stuck in that beginner's rut and you know, trying to get to that intermediate level? Okay, yeah. Um so we deal with that all the time because the people nowadays they they want to advance very quickly of course. uh and they don't have the the patience or, or mostly they have like a false uh sense of self esteem mm. so they they think they're better than they are and i would say you should not be afraid to call yourself a beginner a salsa dancer for a while because you it's it's all about you know how we say like you are what you eat yeah so with with salsa dancing is like you are as good of a salsa dancer as how many absolute beginner classes you've taken okay or how many hours you've spent drilling the absolute basic moves and steps because if you don't have that foundation uh, and I'm not talking just about memorizing the steps and where your foot is on every count. I'm talking about actually being comfortable, uh, being able to find the on one or on two or whatever style you're doing without a problem, like hearing a song and knowing what beat to step on. Right. Uh, you know, uh, not only knowing the steps, but also look good doing it. Because yeah, if, if you're if you're even like a, a beginner student, but if you throw out a basic step with some styling and some flair yeah. i mean yeah, i would much rather i would much rather dance with someone like that than someone who knows 150 moves but is executing them like a robot right. like there's no you know there's no kind of feel you know you you got to develop not only you don't have to like you don't only have to memorize but you have to develop the feel for it mm-hmm. you have to you know, uh, hear the music and music has to like make you want to dance and it has to look good. Yeah, definitely. So That's like the basically don't be afraid to drill, drill, drill the beginner levels for, for as long as, as possible or for as long as your instructor tells you to. Uh, and, and, and along the way you have to go out and social dance. I mean, that's, you learn more social dancing than you ever learn in classes. I believe that. I definitely believe that. Um, when, when I say the word musicality, (laughs) what does that mean to you? 
<laughs> it's the hardest thing that we have to teach right. is musicality that is because very difficult. people either have it or they <laughs> absolutely don't have it. So it's like it's the hardest thing because they're like, I, I can't, you know, I can't, I don't know what the own one, like I don't know where own one is, and and we're like, well, nobody has written books about it because you can't. It's it's a, it's more of a feel yes. than it's something that I can like give you in theory. And a lot of people here, especially in this area, they're so technical they're it or accountants or lawyers they look for you to like literally like implant it in their brain and, uh -huh. and give, give them some kind of magic formula that will always you know but what i what we tell them is basically close your eyes and feel the music exactly. and try to you know move with it like if you're in a nightclub and you hear a song what does your body tell you to do so this is you know this is like one approach the other approach the more technical one of course is um you know, learning to listen to the different instruments in the music. But guess what? Like, not every song has the clave on one, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. not every song, you know, so it's it's more of a few and it's the hardest thing to teach. But, you know, people make progress. So it's mm. it's doable. Not nothing is impossible. If you can, that. if you can walk, you can dance. Hey, that's, that's I've, uh, I've, heard, I've often heard you say that in YouTube videos. If you can walk, you can dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh all right so the last couple of questions um what i want you to, i want you to really just plug yourself you know plug what you have going on in your life so um what is uh what, what are some of your upcoming events that you have going on in your life or at your studio the the studio <clears throat> like literally events or like uh major steps or um how about both yeah events and like major yeah major steps you have coming up yeah, so I mean, generally we we have our monthly social that we do every third Saturday of the month, and we do that mainly because we want to offer a platform uh, for our students to come and you know mingle and practice what they've learned. Yeah. Uh, because it's a great, like a lot of people, like you said, are intimidated to first go out there. But this is a great space because they know each other. They know you know our DJ is one of our. Uh, well, actually, our top instructor. Okay, awesome. Um, and um, and so it's a more familiar place space for them, and it's a great way for them to start social dancing. Yeah, okay. So we do that every month, and uh, in addition to that, of course, we spend months uh, and months preparing and working on logistics and all that for our kids' recitals. Uh, so we kind of outgrew our, um, you know, studio. So now we're renting a 300 seat, uh, auditorium for our, um, uh, recitals. And ah. you know, sometimes we even have more people than that. <laughs> we run out of, okay. Wow. You're drawing a major audience, a major crowd. That's amazing. Yeah. So, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. And then, like I said, you know, the next step is uh, hopefully opening that second location okay. and hopefully everything will, will go well with that and we'll be able to transfer uh, how successful we are here to that, to the new location and even more. Okay. All right, man. Um, you might not know this one, but uh, do you know where your dance team is performing next? They are actually performing here at our social dance party on March 16th. Okay. And after that, they're performing at the Baltimore Salsa Congress. Um, and they, they pretty much hit all the major Salsa Congress in the area. And um, they started going out of town, like Houston, Florida, um uh, they haven't been on the west coast yet okay. but yeah that's the next yeah i mean i i'm pretty much uh aware of what's going on okay. uh you know, people would say that i i need to let go a little bit more but uh <laughs> i'd like to you know be kept in the loop and of course that's your baby you know that's your you created yeah, that exactly. of course yeah. um i guess last question Ms. Silvio. uh how can people reach out to you how can people get in contact with you well, the easiest way is the website, also with Sylvia.com. And then if you click on contact, then the email dance at also with Sylvia.com comes directly to me and nobody else. Okay, and awesome. 
you can always call the studio i'm pretty much always here uh during the day so yeah but we also as far as performance teams we also have a student performance team that i didn't mention so in addition to amika we also have a student performance team led by one uh, another one of our instructors um so we have a few teams that are representing the studio and in addition to that um a few so the directors of these teams are also dancing with their partners and uh performing at congresses um just as a couple in okay. addition to teams okay all right well um that's really all i have for you i really just want to say i really i really really appreciate you taking the time out your day to just talk <laughs> to me yes this is anything a great, for salsa <laughs> this is a great interview um you have so much knowledge and experience so seriously i, I really want to just thank you for this you're very welcome. I'm happy to help, and let me know uh, where we can find this podcast. Of course. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna upload it to YouTube and everything. Um, and I'm actually, I, I also I, my podcast is actually on iTunes and Spotify as well. So I'm gonna put it up there as well. So I would, awesome. Yeah, I would love if you could. Well, just I appreciate share you people. reaching out to me, of and uh, you know, that's uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Of course, yeah. So if I'm if I'm ever near the uh, DC area, I will make sure. I can <laughs> Absolutely. Check out your <laughs> yeah, you should come and uh, dance with us. Oh for my sure. goodness, I would love to. I would love that. I, I, I've been dancing so sauce is what I started with originally myself. So it's what I am most confident in. So. Oh, I would Great. love to, I would love to dance with you, Sylvia. I would love that. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. I promise you, if you come, please um, give me a call and we'll hook you up with a few free entries for the social. Okay, awesome. Oh my goodness, you're the best with Sylvia. <laughs> oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's all good. I don't want, I'm not going to hold you up anymore. I know how completely busy you are. So that, like I said, thank you so much, Ms. Sylvia. Please enjoy the rest of your day. You do too. All Good right. luck with everything and uh, stay in touch. Yes, man. Take it easy. All right. Thank you.